This is the lab video for the pH and buffer solutions lab. A completed lab will include your pre-lab questions answered, uh, recorded data and observations, and the post-lab questions answered. Um, in order to submit the assignment, you're going to upload your assignment or your lab packet into the pH and buffers lab assignment in Canvas. You really have two options. In Canvas, I've provided a Word document of this lab packet, and you can type directly into the Word document and then save it and upload it into the assignment. Or you can print out the lab packet, write directly onto the paper, and then scan it, save it as a PDF file, and upload the PDF file. If you don't have a scanner, you could also use a scanner app on your phone or tablet, and the scanner apps will save your pictures as PDF files, so then you could upload it. Um, so this, uh, oh, before we get started, I would just recommend that you would get your lab packet out so that you can um, uh, have it there to read along with the procedure and to write down your observations and your data. This lab packet goes along with the acid and base chapter in your textbook. So if you find that some of the words you're unfamiliar with, that would be one of the good resources that you could use. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll just start with some of the basics. I am assuming that you've looked at the chapter so that the words are not totally unfamiliar. So the first part of the lab, we're gonna measure the pH. And so pH is a measure of how much acid is present. So we say measure of acidity. One way that we uh, write how much acid is present is we have a bracket and then we put it around H3O plus. And this is what we uh, refer to as an acid. And the brackets mean concentration. So if I wrote a bracket with H3O plus, that says the acid concentration. And when we're talking about base concentration, we put a bracket, because that means concentration and then OH minus represents the base. So this is the base concentration. Now acid and base concentration, when you have water, uh, for example, pure water would have equal acid and base concentration. And any aqueous system has some acid and some base. So when we talk about a solution and their pH, we're actually talking about how much acid is present. And a pH scale goes from zero to 14. And so in the middle is seven, and if something has a pH of seven, that would be neutral. And neutral would mean that you have acid and base that are equal. Now, any number between zero and one is considered acidic. I'm sorry, zero and seven. I didn't mean zero and one. Any number between zero and seven is considered acidic, and this means that the acid to be acidic has to be more than any base that is present. So basically, when something's acidic, we say that's more acid. And then if the pH shows up between seven and 14, then we would say that the base is greater or more than the acid. So a pH of 12, a high, that higher number, even though it's a pH of 12, what it's telling me is that I have more base and less acid. And so the first part of this lab, we're going to measure the pH of a couple different solutions. 
And then um, the second part of the lab, we're going to create a buffer and then see if they work. So what a buffer is made of, it's made of an acid and its conjugate base. Whoops. In fact, let me correct this and be more specific. It has to be a weak acid. Now, when we get to that section and we are looking at the two parts that we're mixing together, I'll help you identify which one is the acid and which one is the conjugate base. And what a buffer does is it resists, resists change in pH. So a buffer, if a system has a buffer in it, when you add some acid to it, the pH should still stay the same. Now, if a system does not have a, a, a buffer in it, if you add an acid, the pH is gonna drop, right? Because it would mean that you have more acid, so the number would go lower. Or if you add base to something that does not have a buffer, if it doesn't, then you add base and the pH is gonna go up because it's gonna be more basic. But um, if you have a buffer and it's working, the pH would stay the same. And we'll take a look and see if we can understand that when we look at our data. So let's go ahead and start the lab. So the first part, we're just measuring pH. And there would be different ways to measure pH. Uh, one of the most accurate ways would be to use something called a pH meter. And a pH meter has a probe and you simply set the probe in the liquid and it would give you a digital readout. Now pH meters work really well, but there's some complications. They have to be calibrated and um, they sometimes, the ones we have in lab are a little finicky. And so we uh, have not been using pH meters. Instead, we're using something called pH paper and pH paper has a variety of indicators on it. And indicators are chemicals that will change color when the pH changes. So a pH paper has a variety of colors and those colors will be uh, related to a specific pH. And so we use the, the uh, scale that's given to us and we match colors. You might be familiar with pH paper if you have a swimming pool, for example. So in this first picture, I have um, the pH paper, and it has the scale. And on the scale, it starts at a pH of 0 and goes to a pH of 13. So it's, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You're all impressed I can count. Okay, so let's take a look. So this right here, the label is 0 0.1 molar HCl. So I'm going to do the first one with you and then the other ones, I, I'll write down what the chemical is to verify, but I want you to actually make the measurements. So um, on this particular one, I would look at the pH paper right here and then try to match it with the colors. Now some of the colors look the same and if you think it's in between, you can put a 0.5, but pH paper is not that accurate or precise, I should say. It's not that precise, so we really can't get anything more than a 0.5. So looking at this, to me, these two colors match. So this is zero, one, two. So then I would say that this HCl has a pH of 2. Okay, and now let's look at this one. So this is the 0 0.1 molar acetic acid. So you're going to look right here at this color right there, and you're going to match it to the scale.
Okay, so this one, oh, I took two pictures of this one because I thought maybe you might want to see it next to different things. And so this is a 0 0.1 molar, uh, this is sodium acetate. Both of these are. And so I put here, you'll be looking at this color and matching it with the different things. So uh, I took two pictures because I would have had to hold it in different places. And the pH paper, you do have to measure it when it's wet. The color will change, it kind of fades as it dries. And if you were doing this in lab, it really doesn't take that long and would probably be easier for you simply because it's not just a picture. But you do the best you can. So record the, record the pH, this is sodium acetate. And then this is carbonic acid. Okay, so you'll read, you'll look at the color and this one doesn't even really look like it's wet, but it is. So you'll read that color there and match it. Now, after I got home, I realized uh, that I did not do sodium bicarbonate. Someone came into the lab while I was working and I think I just lost track. So you just put uh, an X in that box. I, I, I will remember. And then this one, I also did two pictures so that I could hold it near all of them. So both of these pictures are of the same thing. And this is uh, NH3 or ammonia. And you may say, oh, but why is it NH4OH? When ammonia is in water, uh, that's how we write the formula. So um, it's, it is the correct thing. So these are two pictures of the same thing. I just kind of moved it between the two things. And remember, you can have a 0.5 if you really think that it is uh, in between. Um, on these, because we're using our eyes as detectors, sometimes I find with students and groups, there is actually a discussion about the differences in colors because people see things a little bit differently. Um, so don't be too worried. And then this is also, these are two pictures of the same thing. This is sodium hydroxide. And again, the reason there's two pictures is because I tried to hold them next to both of the colors, just so you could uh, see the differences. So they're the same thing, I just held them next to both the colors. So that's part A of the lab. It really is simply looking at uh, the pH paper and trying to determine the pH of the acids and bases. Remember, if the number was less than seven, then that substance would be acidic. And if it was greater than seven, then that substance would be basic. Um, uh, we are not using the pH meter. So you can either just leave that blank on your data page or if you would rather, you could put a line through it. But I know we're not using the pH meter. So now let's go ahead and look at the buffer systems. And so uh, what I had to do, it says I needed four beakers. So I got four beakers, two for each buffer system. So I have here on the left-hand side, this is buffer A. And then on the right-hand side, this is buffer B. And so we make a buffer with um, an acid and its conjugated base. So this one has, if you look in the pink bottle, this is acetic acid. That's the acid. And its formula is CH3COOH. And then here, this is going to be the conjugate base. And it is uh, sodium acetate. And 
and that is uh, NaCH3COO. Now I want to come up here to remind you about weak acids and their conjugate bases. So acetic acid is this. Now what acids do, if you have looked at your chapter, is they donate hydrogens. So what acetic acid, if this is the acid, a conjugate base is when you remove the H plus. That's what acids do. So if I removed that H plus, I would get CH3COO minus. So the acid is CH3COOH, that would be the acid, and then the conjugate base is CH3COO minus. Now if we look down here, there's no minus and there's a sodium. Well, the problem is this does not exist by itself. And so we put it with sodium. And when we put it in solution, it's ionic, so it dissociates. So the sodium and that separate. So oftentimes you will see if something has an ion, you'll see it with things like sodium. So there we have a weak acid and its conjugate base, and that is buffer A. And you see to make it, I measured out five milliliters of each one of them. Okay, I'm going to erase this part, and we're gonna look at the second, acid, the second buffer, buffer B. Okay, so buffer B has to have an acid, and this acid is carbonic acid, which is uh, H2CO3. And then it has a weak, ba uh, uh, sorry, it's conjugate base, and that is uh, sodium, I'm going to write conjugate base, and it is sodium bicarbonate. Which has a formula NaHCO3. So let me look again up here with you. So the acid is H2CO3. And then to find a conjugate base, it, what we do for an acid, it loses an H plus. So I would take away an H and I would get HCO3. Then I'm also losing a plus, so that makes it a minus. So H2CO3 has a partner or a conjugate base, HCO3 minus. Now remember, you can't have ions just by themselves, so I can't find that on the shelf. So then they put a sodium with it, and that's how we get our conjugate base. So I have the acid, the weak acid is carbonic acid, and its partner, so its conjugate base is sodium bicarbonate. And to make it, I took five milliliters of each. So the first thing I did, I'm, I worked through, I'm gonna work through buffer A first and then we'll work at buffer B. So we're gonna do buffer A first. So buffer A is acetic acid and sodium acetate. And as step three, I, me, uh, I measured the pH for the buffer before I started. So I made the buffer and then I measured the pH. So I want you here, you're gonna look here and match it to the colors. This does not have HCl in it yet. So I, I, this, I, I had labeled my containers, but this uh, does not have HCl. This is just when I mix five milliliters of the um, uh, acetic acid and five milliliters of the sodium acetate. So I want you to measure, this will be in your data, 
This is the buffer of acetic acid and sodium acetate. So it's just the buffer, the first line. So measure the pH. And remember it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then what I did was following the directions, I divided it into a uh, five milliliter halves. So I just took my buffer A, this is still buffer A, and I divided it and put it into two different bottles. I mean, in two different beakers. And to this beaker, I added HCl. So here's the pH. So you wanna match that color with the scale. And then on the second one, I added the sodium hydroxide, 12 drops each. So this, is, this has 12 drops HCl, and then I measured the pH, and this has 12 drops NaOH, and I measured the pH. Here's this one. Now, remember the job of a buffer is to maintain pH. So if we don't see a significant change in the pH, that is actually correct. So sometimes we do see a little bit of change. Uh, it's possible that when you add acid, your pH may go down from where you started because acids make pH go down. And when you add base, it's possible that it may go up a little bit. Um, but if a buffer is working well, when you add acid or, P or base, the pH will stay the same. So then I did the same thing with buffer B. So this is buffer B. So it has a carbonic acid, which is H2CO3, and then sodium bicarbonate, which is HNAHCO3. So this is the acid, and this is its conjugate base. So I took the sample and I measured its pH. This is before anything is added. So this is buffer B, and this is just the two things together. So that would be your initial pH. That would be the pH that we were hoping it to stay, on, to stay at. And then I had, this is buffer B plus 12 drops of HCl. And this is buffer B plus 12 drops of NaOH. Now remember, let's think about the job of a buffer. If a buffer is working, it will maintain the pH. It will resist a change from where it started. If it's not working as well, when you add acid, the pH will drop lower because acids have lower pHs. When you add a base, the pH will go higher. Um, and if, if that happens, then the buffer is not working very well. So now you have all of the data for the lab. And so you have pre-lab questions and post-lab questions. And I would like to help you with one of the post-lab questions. So the post-lab question I would like to help you with is question number two. So get your packet and look at number two. Number two says using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation shown below, here's the, here it is, So this is called the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. It says calculate the pH for your buffer systems. So every buffer system will have a different pH, and it's the job of that buffer to try to maintain that pH. And we, if we know what acid and conjugate base we're adding, uh, then we can know 
what the pH of the buffer should be using the Henderson Hasselbach equation. Now the question goes on uh, to say that A minus, this is the concentration of the conjugate base, tells me this in the question, and H plus is the concentration, brackets mean concentration, um, of the weak acid. And then it tells me pKa is a constant, and it tells me for acetic acid, it equals 4.76. And then for uh, carbonic acid, it equals 6.37. So um, it wants me to calculate this. So I'm trying to find the pH. Now, um, so for the pH of, let's do the acetic acid. It's going to equal the pKa, which is 4.76, plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid. Now there's several places you can find the concentration listed. Um, one place is if you look on your data sheet, it tells you that the acetic acid is 0 0.1 molar and it also tells you that the sodium acetate is 0 0.1 molar. So um, that would be one place. You could also look on the um, uh, materials list. It also has it. So to plug it in, let's see, 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.1. So this is 4.76 plus the log of 1. And if I plug that in my calculator, I get 4.76 plus zero. So the pH is 4.76. So that's what my buffer should have been. Now let's go back and compare. Remember this number 4.76. Okay, so this is buffer A. And I'm looking, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks, that looks pretty close to 4. You might have had a 4, you might have had a 4.5 around there. So if I look, let's just say I said it was a 4, although when I look at it, it does have a little bit, let's look carefully. It has a little bit of green, so it, it's not quite as orange as four. Not quite, but it's definitely not five. So let's say I said it was 4.5. So if I said in my data, that it should have been 4.5. Uh, that's what I measured. Then I think it's pretty close. So it's either around, it's 4 or 4.5-ish. It's definitely not 5 yet. So I do think that would be pretty close. So the um, question 3 says for each buffer compare what we measured in lab. So let's say I measured 4.5 to what we calculated and I calculated 4.76 and then I would say oh that's pretty close. Now remember if you if let's say you wrote down that you measured 4. That's okay 4 and 4.76 are not super close in pH, but when we're using pH paper, um, that is not too bad. So that's how you answer questions two and three. 
Now remember, you're not on your own in this, so you're welcome to ask questions if you need clarification or just need to run something past me. Please reach out to me through email um, and we can set up either a com Canvas conference. I can email you back and answer your questions or we can do something like a Zoom. So you're not in this alone. Please feel free to reach out if you need some clarification.